Hi, and welcome back to Mysteries Channel. Thank you very much for clicking on my video. You are much appreciated. Have you guys ever heard of the Pantelleria Vecchia Bank Megalith? I hadn't heard of it, but it's fascinating. And what it does when I'm looking at this, this megalith, it just makes me realize again that our timeline, it's off. It's got to be off. Well, the further we dig down and the more we search off the coasts of the cities that we have today, we are astonished to find things that just, you know, don't fit the narrative that we're taught. And this is one of those things. There are other things that are challenging what was once common knowledge, and that would be most of them so far have been found in Turkey. And they're pushing the dates back further and further for advanced civilization. And so I'm kind of excited to talk about this one because it's not in Turkey. This one happens to be off the coast of Sicily of all places. And so let's talk about it. What is it? It's a monolith off the coast of Sicily. The megalith was discovered in 2015 during a seafloor mapping survey in an area called the Pontelleria Vecchia Bank. It's located about 37 miles south of Sicily. Researchers discovered an ancient treasure, a stone monolith spanning 39 feet on the bottom of the Mediterranean. After scans indicated a large, roughly rectangular object, Divers described what appeared to be a large monolith broken into two sections. The entire Pantelleria Vecchia bank is a shallow area, which was once an island. The monolith itself has a fairly rectangular shape, and it contains three holes with similar diameters. One hole with a diameter of 24 inches punched all the way through the stone. While researchers were looking at this, they had to admit there was no reasonable, no natural process that would produce these elements. And along with the three holes and the shape of it, several features suggest the monolith was indeed man-made, possibly by people living during the Mesolithic period about 10,000 years ago. What's more, the monolith doesn't match the roughly 10 million year old stone and rocks on the ocean floor. Rather, as a composition similar to rocks from the ridge that are found in the shallow area, marine area. This is one of the most important details. It supports the idea that the monolith is not made by a natural phenomena, but is indeed man-made. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. It just doesn't happen like that. They suggest the complete hole held a torch, allowing the monolith to serve as a lighthouse to separate the settlement from the sea. Now, how interesting is that? So why the 10,000 year mark? What makes them think it's 10,000 years? I had to freaking know. Well, before the sea level in the Mediterranean rose, an archipelago existed between Sicily and modern day Tunisia. And researchers suggest that possibly these are the people that built the monolith. The archipelago was like a bridge between the European world and the African world. And it is quite possible that people live there. I think it's, I mean, this is what they say. It's quite possible people live there. Obviously, people live there. You don't build a lighthouse in a place where nobody is. It just, that's not, why would they do that then? We don't do it now, right? It doesn't make any darn sense. So the 10,000 year mark comes up now because the archipelago disappeared under the water about 9,500 years ago. So that's why they give it that mark. So they believe 500 years right before the water rose, this was built. But, but the last glacial maximum began 19,000 years ago. At that time, Europe was about 40% larger than it is now. But as glaciers melted and sea water, sea levels rose, and of course, Europe, along with all the other continents, they get much smaller, especially in the lowland areas and shallow shelf areas, such as this channel near Sicily. So in reality, even though they give it a 10,000 year mark, we don't know. It could be anywhere from 19,000 years to 10,000 years. I'm just saying, in reality. But because we know how it is for people that are doing this, you have to be very careful with what you say, especially, especially when you're disputing timeline. You have to take the most, you have to take the safest route if you wanna save your career. And so do, in doing that, they had to say, I'm surprised they didn't say it's exactly 9,500 years old. They, I'm surprised they didn't suggest that it was built merely moments before the sea levels rose, but they gave it 500 years. I personally think, I mean, I really don't know, but I think it's very plausible that it could be older than 10,000 years old. I mean, it could be much older than that. Also, 
The radiocarbon dating of the shell fragments extracted from the stone indicate the stone itself to be 40,000 years old, which I was very surprised about because in all my reading, I'd always heard you cannot date stone. So what exactly did they do? They ended up radiocarbon dating the shells on the stone. That's how they got that number. So interesting as hell because the shells would not have landed on this megalith had it not been underwater. So what does that suggest? It suggests it's much older than 10,000 years, right? It had to have been up and looking at it from my perspective, and you guys put your opinions down at the bottom, but in all honesty, it had to have been standing before the shells got onto it, right? So it has to be at least 40,000 years old. At least that's what I got out of the article. Um, I will link it down below, and if you guys see where I messed up, please put it in the comments because I don't want to just put out a bunch of BS. I actually want what I'm saying to be fairly accurate. And I know I make some weird connections, but still, if you're going to test the shells on it and the shells say 40,000 years old, why would you say 10,000? Why? Because they have to stick with timeline. And 40,000 years ago, we sure as hell weren't moving megalithic rocks, right? right? And in all honesty, maybe the way they wrote it was confusing and I'm just confusing and not understanding the process by which they tested it. And that could also be um, true in this instance. So, my cat is scratching on my chair, so sorry about that. What was the Mesolithic period? The period that is suggested for this monument to have been risen and what were we suggested to be like at this point in time? Well, when you look it up, it says the type of culture associated with the Mesolithic varies between areas, but it is associated with the decline in the group hunting of large animals in favor of a broader hunter-gatherer way of life and the development of more sophisticated and typically smaller lithic tools and weapons than the heavy chipped equivalents typical of the Paleolithic. Depending on the region, some use of pottery and textiles may be found in sites allocated to the Mesolithic, but generally indications of agriculture are taken as a marking transition into the Neolithic. The more permanent settlements tend to be close to the sea or inland waters as this one is. Offering a good supply of food, Mesolithic societies are not seen to be very complex. Burials are fairly simple. In contrast, grandiose burial mounds are a mark of the Neolithic period. But this stone here, if it indeed came from the uh, Mesolithic period, shows a very complex society. For them to be able to erect something so large, drag it to a to a coastline from the sea would take organization and a bunch of people and a good working knowledge and not this. This is a picture taken of the type of tools that science believes humans were using during the Mesolithic period. Now, I don't know what kind of tools like this would be able to, um, you know, quarry large chunks of rock out of the sea to make a lovely lighthouse for the passing boats. I don't know. I, I'm just not seeing it. So tell me, what do you guys think? Is it possible that the timeline is off? I'm just going to say for sure. I think the damn timeline is off. There's no way. There's just no way we, we've only like figured out society in the last 6,000 years. I think it's much more plausible that we had a more technologically advanced civilization that suffered a cataclysm, kind of erased knowledge that was held, buried many and maybe even most of the cities that we're aware of. Yeah, that's all I got. Anyway, if you like, please subscribe, share, leave comments down below. I think this is fascinating. And I think that once we can get past the fact that we weren't just caveman brooding around um, 10,000 years ago, we can actually start to figure out what in the heck happened in the past. You guys have yourselves a very great day.